Good morning. Welcome, everyone. I want to first extend a very special thanks to Dr. Larry Chu and the other organizers of Medicine X. You know, each year, this conference brings together so many people, all focused on improving health and health care. Represented here today are patients, healthcare providers, basic scientists, clinical scientists, entrepreneurs, technologists, payers, and health policy experts, all coming together to form a community, a community of knowledge and dedication to improving health and health care. And goodness knows we need our collective efforts. We just look in our own country, for example, we now spend over 18% of GDP on health care. And yet our health care outcomes, compared to most other developed countries, rank fairly poorly. And take it broader than the United States, and let's look around the globe, where it's estimated that in 2020 there'll be 8.5 billion people on the planet. And increasing, with that increasing population, the impact of the dearth of healthcare providers in so many parts of the world becomes even more tangible and tragic. Now, the solutions are going to come from many different sources and many different approaches. But one thing that I'm confident of is that the solutions are going to require the type of collaboration, the type of knowledge sharing that's going on in this conference today. You know, our vision here at Stanford Medicine is to lead the biomedical revolution in precision health. Precision health is about, the goal of precision health is to predict, prevent, and cure precisely. In the past, of course, Stanford and every other major academic medical center has been devoted, on, has been devoted to the treatment of severe acute diseases. And that's always going to remain an important part of the mission of academic medical centers. But wouldn't it be wonderful if we could use the same enabling technologies of genomics, big data science, regenerative medicine, and apply that knowledge in those technologies in order to prevent diseases altogether, or when we can't prevent them, to detect them much earlier so that we can treat them more effectively. In short, Precision medicine, which we all know about, is about sick care. What we hope precision health will be about is about health care. Precision health for sure incorporates precision medicine, but the way we know that we collectively have achieved success in precision health is that the need for precision medicine will be much less in the future because we'll be keeping all of us much healthier than we've been able to do in the past. So what are some of the important components of this increased focus on health and well-being? Well, I think first it involves a recognition that health is, a portion of health for sure is the medical care we provide in our healthcare delivery system. And it's also a portion of health is our genetic makeup, something we're imbued with from birth. But together, the medical care and, and our genetics make up maybe a quarter of the health-related pie. The rest, or 75%, is social, environmental, and behavioral determinants. And traditionally, we focused far less attention on those social, environmental, and behavioral determinants than we have on the more traditional aspects of medical care and sick care. We need to change that not decrease what we're doing in terms of advancing the treatment of severe acute diseases. For sure, we need to remain focused on that, and this is such an exciting time in that arena. But take that knowledge in those areas of focus and apply them in a predictive, preventive, and proactive way. And let me tell you about a couple of examples where we're doing just that. And I know that you and your institutions have many examples you could add to, to this picture as well. So a couple of examples. Dr. Mark Cullen, who's the Senior Associate Dean for Research at the Stanford School of Medicine and the Director of our Center for Population Health Sciences, Mark and his colleagues have found that there are critical periods during life for the development of 
chronic diseases such as hypertension and diabetes. And that interventions during those critical periods will have much more effect on preventing those chronic diseases or at achieving a better management strategy than treatments at other periods, typically later periods in the course of the disease. Giving us the knowledge we need to plan effective treatment interventions and preventions in ways that we couldn't before. A second example, you know, here at Stanford, we're really big on acronyms. You've probably seen it walking around the campus. But a couple of years ago, a group of our uh, faculty, and this particular project was led by Tom Robinson, a professor of, of pediatrics, put in a, and received a grant from the National Institutes of Health to start a center called SPHERE, Stanford Precision Health for Ethnic and Racial Equity. And one of the projects in SPHERE that's being directed by Tom Robinson is a project looking at obesity among Latino-American children in Santa Clara County. You know, the incidence of obesity among Latino-American children is extraordinarily high, about 39%. And the data on the chronic diseases that follow obesity in children is overwhelming. Diabetes, kidney problems, a host of other illnesses and maladies and life-limiting conditions related to obesity. So how do we understand this obesity epidemic, and then how do we do something about it? Well, we can gain understanding from looking at genomics, from looking at the microbiome, from other metabolic features in these children and their families. But also, we need to gain an understanding of the social, behavioral, and environmental factors that are playing an important role in, ob in the obesity epidemic. And that's exactly what Tom and his colleagues are doing. It's through approaches like these, taking the very best science that's come about from our focus on, in many cases, our focus on sick care, and applying that science in a predictive, preventive, and proactive way. I know that each of you is going to gain a lot of ideas, a lot of encouragement and enthusiasm from your, from your participation in this conference. My challenge to you is to take the energy and enthusiasm that's in this room, and it's also in the places where people are watching on the web streams, take that energy and keep it focused in the work you're doing every day. It's going to take a collaborative effort. It's going to take all of us working together to have the type of impact on health and health care that I know we all can have. Thank you all for your participation. I hope you enjoy the conference, and let's stay in touch. Take care. Thank you.